Bibb County leaders reveal what the next steps will look like in the county's fight against violent crime, the goals mentioned in their violence prevention plan. Plus, a package thief in case in Bibb County now has answers. A woman investigator is charged and arrested in the case. Well, good Thursday morning. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon. You can see it's a little foggy out there this morning. The time is now 630 AM on this December 9th. Did y'all just see that light pop up there? Yeah. I wonder what that is. Hmm, okay. It now it's gone. All right. The mystery of Thursday. I'm Juan <laughs> Aries. And I'm Caitlin Hackett. It looks a little mysterious and ominous all throughout Central Georgia mm -hmm. this morning with all this fog, Courtney. That's right. Yeah. And Macon, of course, not the only place dealing with the fog this morning. Dense fog across a lot of the area in parts of Houston County, Taylor and Macon County, Peach County, parts of Twiggs, Wilkinson, Washington, Hancock, Baldwin County. And there is a dense fog advisory for all of Central Georgia until 10 o'clock this morning. So as you go and get ready to head out the door, whether it's in the next couple of minutes or the next couple of hours, just be very careful and drive extra carefully as there could be some dense fog out there. Fog here in downtown Macon 36. It's also cold out there this morning. Just something else to think about as you get ready to start your day. Be sure that you have the coat 37 in Warner Robins, 41 in Gordon. We're at 37 in Forsyth, 39 in Montezuma, 38 in Eastman and 37 in Wrightsville, 41 in Gordon and in Milledgeville. Generally mid to upper 30s and low 40s. Through the afternoon, it's going to be chilly mid 50s by lunchtime, partly sunny skies, so it's not going to be wall to wall sunshine today with highs in the low 60s, mainly dry today. That changes Friday and even more so Saturday. We're going to be watching for maybe severe weather Saturday night. I'll have all those details in just a few minutes. Thank you, Courtney. New from overnight, the hunt is now on after an armed robbery in East Macon. It happened around 2 30 this morning at the Gray Highway CVS Pharmacy. That's on the corner of Sherling Drive. The Bibb Sheriff's Office says a man with a gun walked into the store and demanded money from the clerk. He got some cash and then ran out the door. The photo they released is not that clear, but they described the robber as wearing dark clothes and a ski mask. Well, making neighborhoods safer. That's the message coming from Bibb leaders as they try to find solutions on violent crime here in the county. Now, yesterday, Mayor Lester Miller announced the Making Violence Prevention or MVP strategic plan. Myself and our team are committed to meet on a quarterly basis to go over this plan, to discuss its effectiveness, and to assign goals and responsibilities to each of these organizations and agencies to make sure it's just not paper that's wasted, but make sure that we do what we said we were going to do. The announcement comes months after the county first launched MVP in June as a way to improve public safety. Since then, leaders held 14 public forums and people submitted over 700 surveys, letting the county know problems that their neighborhoods face and some solutions to address them. The MVP leadership team used that information to come up with the strategic plan. Here's a few of the goals outlined in it, improving the relationship between law enforcement and Bibb County community members, increasing sheriff's patrols and fully staffing the sheriff's office, improving Macon's education system from early childhood through adult education, and providing more supervised activities for younger people. You can get a closer look at this whole entire plan. That's on our website at 13WMAZ.com. A Cobb County man is now sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison after a jury convicted him of murdering a Baldwin County man. Yesterday, a jury found 40 year old Ray Pollard from Ackworth guilty on all counts, including malice and felony murder. District Attorney T. Wright Barksdale says Pollard shot John Shane McAfee in October last year as he arrived home from work in Milledgeville. Barksdale says that Pollard was angry because his girlfriend of nine years broke up with him and later started dating McAfee. The jury deliberated for about two hours and the judge sentenced Pollard to life without the possibility of parole. Right now, a Milledgeville man faces a terroristic threat charge after a bomb threat to Georgia College's student union. The investigation began around 8 yesterday morning after someone called in a threat. The university says the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and GCSU Public Safety arrested 28-year-old Wilson Harper Jr. Investigators cleared the student union out of caution. They found no explosive devices. The school says Harper worked for a food service company contracted to provide dining services on campus. Well, this morning, a woman is in jail without bond in connection to several package thefts in South Bibb County. We told you about this story yesterday morning after a woman told us someone stole about $400 worth of items off her porch last week. The Bibb Sheriff's Office Crime Prevention Network later sent out a lookout alert for this woman. Property investigators identified her as 42-year-old Rebecca Knight and arrested her. They charged Knight with four counts of theft by taking. 
And as you get packages delivered this holiday season, that increases the importance of making sure to protect your mail. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office looks to help with that. Sheriff Brad Freeman authorized the use of unmarked cars and plainclothes deputies to patrol neighborhoods. It's an effort to cut down on burglaries and thefts during the holidays. Now, the Sheriff's Office says cars will have blue and red lights and will likely stop other cars. You can call the Sheriff's Office or 911 to verify the stop by giving your location. Turning to the latest in the fight against COVID-19, today Baldwin County students, employees, parents and family have a shot to get a vaccine or booster. Baldwin Schools has a ceiling up with the North Central Health District to offer them. The vaccines are open to those 12 years old and up. They'll also have Pfizer's pediatric doses for students 5 years to 11 years old. Now the event runs from noon to 6 at the county's Board of Education office. Also today, people in Bibb County can line up for a vaccine. The school district says the Georgia Department of Public Health and Community Organized Relief Effort, or CORE, will offer the COVID-19 vaccinations. Health workers will also get out the Pfizer boosters. It goes from 3 to 6.30 this afternoon at Howard High School on Forsyth Road, and it's open to anyone 12 years old and up. Well, now to headlines from across Georgia. We are seeing an uptick in flu visits. Data from the Georgia Department of Public Health shows about 59% more cases this year compared to the same time in 2020. The most affected age group is kids four and under. They make up nearly 40% of the over 17,000 flu cases in Georgia so far this season. The president of the state chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics says flu season typically peaks around January to February before dipping back down late into spring. The doctor also recommends getting your flu shot. Well, no more state income tax. Former Senator David Perdue said this week that he would push to get rid of it as he announced he's running for governor. The idea of eliminating state income taxes may gain steam as we head into an intense election year, but dropping it may not be as easy as it sounds. My bold vision for our state is very simple. Completely eliminate the state income tax. It's time. Proposals to eliminate state income taxes have gone nowhere in Georgia. No lawmaker bothered to pitch it in the last legislative session. And budget analysis Danny Kinson says it's a radical proposal. We, we're not talking about a small fraction of the budget here uh, or something that, that could easily be eliminated in any way. We're talking about literally uh, the main state source of revenue that's powered the state budget uh, since the mid 20th century. Oh, wage earners pay the state income tax and it's tallied up each year along with federal income taxes. It's the largest of the state's revenue sources and exceeds the money the state makes from the four next largest sources of revenue combined. It's also the main source of funding for Georgia's public education system, both K through 12 and supplements for state colleges and fund state health care programs. That means if you eliminate the state income tax, lawmakers would have to either create new taxes to replace it or cut those popular programs. Well, UGA is set to celebrate four of its groundbreaking black alumni. On Tuesday, the University System of Georgia Board of Regents approved UGA's proposal to name buildings after those graduates. The university will name the Science Library the McBay Science Library. Shirley McBay got her doctorate from, in math from UGA in 1966. And a short walk away, the school will name a currently under construction first-year student residence hall, Black Diallo Miller Hall. They're the first three black American students to enroll at UGA as freshmen and complete their degrees. The university expects that new dorm to open next fall, which will mark the 60th anniversary of the trio's freshman year. Very cool. This is an awesome story. The Atlanta Braves added another piece of hardware to the trophy case. Last night, the Braves were named the 2021 Sports Illustrated Team of the Year. Braves manager Ryan Snicker accepted the award on behalf of the Braves organization, players, coaches, and the city of Atlanta. Now, Snicker added that seeing Atlanta come together during the World Series and seeing the happiness it brought to people made all of that hard work worth it. Now, the World Series champs were up against the Chicago Sky, Milwaukee Bucks, and Tampa Bay Lightning for the Team of the Year award. A big shout out to them. Yes, way to go, Braves. And from the diamond to the gridiron, here's the Central Georgia team looking to put their mark on sports history. You know, we just have a medal right now, but we're going to get that ring Thursday. So just adding more jewelry to my collection. You heard them today. The Dodge County Indians, Joe Coe, will try to secure a state title ring against Lithia Springs. Now, this season marks just the second year that flag football has been a Georgia High School Association sport. And in year two, Dodge County, they are already set to play for a state title. Oh, that is great. Head coach Clint Sanders and his team grabbed a win over Riverwood in the semifinal on Monday in Atlanta getting the Indians to 12 and 1 on the year. Today they will face the Lithia Springs Lions who are 15 and 3 on the year. Game starts at 12:45 from Center Park Stadium in Atlanta. Oh, best of luck to them. How right? exciting. Then Saturday, the Warner Robins Demons look to make it back to back as state champs when they challenge the Calhoun Yellow Jackets. That's at 3:30 p.m. also at Center Park. 
Well, the time is now 6.40 a.m. Gracie Doko, stand up. Yes. Shout out to y'all doing Her big things. Yes. Second year of the program, already going for the state ring. Love it. Exactly. We got to put, you know, Gracie, we got to start putting Doko on the map more. Yeah. I was like, I know Gracie wrote the story yeah. with love and tenderness this yes, morning. Yes, right. How <laughs> she says, you better believe it. I think that's so exciting. And I love her confidence. The girl who they interviewed, yes. her confidence mm -hmm. saying, I'm just going to add another ring to my jewelry collection. Like you go, girl. girl. <laughs> yep. And we're excited for them. Them and, of course, the demons. That's yeah. all super exciting. It takes a lot of work. As a, I was a high school athlete, it takes a lot of grit, mm -hmm. a lot of hard work to get to state. So we are so proud of all of you guys. And best of luck, of course. That's really, really exciting. All right, everybody. Well, of course, maybe not as exciting as all the fun things going on in uh, Dodge County and for the Warner Robins Demons is the weather this morning. It's really not great. We traded all of the heavy rain and thunderstorm activity for now dense fog. In fact, a dense fog advisory is in effect for all of central Georgia until 10 o'clock this morning. So that means less than a quarter mile of visibility will be possible. We've seen that in a lot of spots this morning and it's continuing to pop up in new spots. Parts of Houston County, it looks like now heading into parts of Crispin Dooley County and parts of Dodge County. Also Taylor in Macon, Lawrence County, parts of Wilkinson County and Baldwin County. Less than a quarter mile of visibility. You pair that with heading down the highway, maybe about 70 miles per hour. It causes some issues, so just take it slow this morning. You can see a pretty dreary look here in Lawrence County for the start of the day. It's 37 in Dublin, 37 in Warner Robins, 36 in Macon and 35 in Butler. Not only is it foggy, it's cold out there. So all of you students getting ready to head out to the bus stop, be sure that you are bundled up. And that goes, of course, for all of you heading out for work. But don't be in a rush this morning. You're going to want to take it easy out there. Now we're going to stay mainly dry today as high pressure maintains control. Of course, this is pulling in the cooler air from the north, giving us our cold morning. We'll have a chilly afternoon. Highs only in the upper 50s and low 60s. As we head into the late evening, and that's where we're going to start to increase our coverage of rain. And once the rain starts, we'll have a pretty unsettled overnight and morning tomorrow as another weather system approaches from the south. Notice some heavier downpours. So yes, unfortunately, looks to be a little bit of a rainy ride to work tomorrow. The roads are going to be wet, so can't stress it enough. Just drive carefully today and of course tomorrow morning. By the evening, if you have any Friday night plans, our rain becomes a little more isolated, our coverage of rain. So just pack the umbrella just in case. Now, of course, Saturday, that's what all eyes are on as a cold front moves in. As we head into the late evening, Here's 9 o'clock, and that's when we're going to open up a window of opportunity for severe storms. Just an isolated threat for severe weather. Level 1 of 5 on the scale could have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings. What we're going to be looking for is damaging wind gusts upwards of 60 miles per hour. Maybe a brief isolated tornado. I think that th threat is pretty low and heavy rain, of course. We'll bring that threat to an end around 11 or midnight on Saturday. Now, as we head into Sunday, we're dry and cold. We'll wake up in the 30s Monday. Temperatures will rebound back into the mid to upper 60s Tuesday and Wednesday of next week.